Hello everybody, welcome to iCommand, this is TV Boy, and we've got another Season 7 Game Log review for you all today. But before I jump into that, I just want to announce that there is a free Vassal Tournament coming up on September 10th. Uh, this is Saturday, September 10th, starting at 8am Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and it's going to be, I'm going to live stream it if I can, but I wanted to all to know that there's going to be a very special prize for first place, and this is going to be a monthly recurring tournament. I'm going to poll people on Slack to see when the most people are available each month and then uh, schedule it for the month ahead. But there's a special prize for each of these. The winners of these tournaments will receive a play set, a full set of Season 7 professionally printed cards. Uh, whatever gets fully approved after the, uh, the community vote. I will order it from the printer and have it shipped directly to your address and that's going to happen each month so definitely check it out. Um, this is a great opportunity to learn how to play on Vassal online. It's really a lot of fun and um, people are really helpful. The people that do play online, they, everybody wants to help and show you how to do it so definitely check it out and if you can't play, um, you know, check out the live stream if you can. It'll be a lot of fun. All right, so getting back into it, we've got another Season 7 game. And the reason we're doing these is because I know that uh, we've got the community vote coming up very soon here, just a week on August 21st to the 28th. And I want all of you, I want you to go and participate in that vote and vote on the cards that we are adding to the game. Uh, we want the community's input. We want people to share their thoughts and share their votes on what should be added and what shouldn't be. If people think that something is a problem and they don't want it in the game, um, you can go and vote against it to not get approved. And if 30% of the community votes to disapprove something, it won't get added to the project and it'll get removed. So <clears throat> I know that not everybody has time to commit to playing online or even playing in person to play test these themselves. So that's why I do these videos once the cards get finalized. Uh, so that people can see what they look like in action, they can see what these cards do and how they play, and make feel like they're making an informed decision uh, when they go into the vote to the polls and vote on each card whether they want it approved or not approved. So, with that said, uh, we've got a sweet game for you here. Uh, was recommended to me by Derek um, in the Slack channel. Said this was a super sweet game, so I'm gonna go ahead and check it out. Uh, so we've got Derek playing the scum list. We're still testing out Mando at 12 points instead of 10. This is kind of a last minute test we're doing, uh, focus play test with this, asking people to play as much as this as they can. Uh, so we've got Derek playing Mando. He's got also Migs Mayfeld, uh, Jabba the Hutt, Onar, Dr. Afra, Bib Fortuna, and of course Clan of Two to go with Mando and then extra armor for the four block tokens. So Mando has only Season 7 card. And then we've got Christian, who's playing a uh, Rebel list. And he's got Jedi Luke, who was lowered to 10 points last season. Uh, still a lot of people felt he wasn't quite where he should be as one of the, you know, most famous uh, iconic characters in the uh, franchise. So we did make a new skirmish attachment for him similar to what vader and ig88 got so you can see here heir to the jedi uh is adding a reroll. pretty much that's it it's mostly a buff to the other corset luke but still nice to have a reroll on jedi luke he's also playing zeb aurelios who got an update for season seven and you can see he actually just got a last minute change to lasat honor guard uh to have that nifty little punch dagger ability where he can change his dice uh, if you only see a sim single symbol. And then he's also got uh, Garkon, uh, Mara Jade, and I'll show Mara Jade's card here for those who are not familiar. Uh, and then R2-D2, C-3PO, Gideon Argus, Heroic Effort, and Balance of the Force. So Derek's got initiative. We're playing on Arm Salvage, so this is the mission where you um, are trying to control these stationary objectives and you get power tokens at the end of each round as well as two VPs for each one you control. You can see we've got the blue on the left, the red, and the yellow on the right. Very small map, very compact, very easy to close the distance. So this should be a good map to see um, Jedi Luke and Mara Jade and Garkon in action. Although Mando is very potent in close range as well, so Christian will have to be careful. But uh, Derek's got the initiative, so let's get into it. <coughs> Both players drawing their cards. Um, looks like Derek is passing, so because uh, he does only have six activations. 
Uh, although Christian only has six, so I'm not sure why Christian's going first. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, he's got seven. Yeah, okay. So Derek is activating. Uh, Derek is passing. Christian activates first. He's going to draw a card with R2-D2. Jabba going to draw a card for Derek and focus Mando. 3PO going to activate, going to focus Jedi Luke. Uh, we've got Bib Fortuna going to activate and focus. Oh, going to be planning first. I'll throw a Bib up here so you guys can see what his card is. He's from Season 6, as is Migs Mayfield. So we're going to play planning and draw some more cards for Derek. And now he's going to focus something. He's going to focus Mayfield. Getting Argus is going to focus Garkon and move Mara Jade two spaces towards the red objectives. And now we've got Onar activating. Going to open this door here and move into the blue crate area. Zeb activating. Interesting that Christian's choosing not to focus Zeb. That was one of the things we changed mid-season. Originally you could not... He cannot gain any conditions, harmful or beneficial. Uh, we found he was struggling, so we took that restriction away. Uh, looks like we're not going to see him get focused here, though. So that'll be interesting to see how he does just on his own. All right, uh, back to the game here. Our Afra, Dr. Afra, going to control the terminal. And I'll go ahead and throw her card up here as well for you guys to check out. She's from Season 5, so she's not a new card for this, for ICP anyway. Marjay is going to double move up to the far red objective, so getting very close to Derek's figures. And now we've got Migs Mayfield activating. <clears throat> and looks like Derek has given him some block tokens, most likely to spend with his droid arm. And you can see there um, his abilities. He's from Season 6. Garkon activating. He got updated in Season 3, I want to say. It might have been Season 2, actually. So he's he's a pretty established uh, character. We'll throw Garkon's card up here as well. Okay, Mando activating. Going to move to control the blue stash, but not making any super forward uh, pushes here and now Jedi Luke is going to be able to activate oh he's going to play Heart of Freedom so he's going to get two movement points for that and we might see him go after Mando <coughs> oh okay so it looks like he moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 so 10 spaces and it looks like he's going to take out he's going to go for um, Bib Fortuna with his free heroic attack and for those that don't aren't familiar, we'll throw Luke's card up here. So really nothing changed with Heir to the Jedi. It's just he gets a reroll now on his attack, which is really good for him. He really needed that. Um, not a great roll. So that reroll is going to come in clutch here. I think he's going to reroll that green. Oh, is that a dead bib? Four, five, six, plus two. Oh, yeah, that is a dead bib for Tuna. So that is big, actually. Um, I think Christian made a really good... Good judgment there of going after Bib because that illicit arms ability is so powerful and being able to remove it from play like imagine if you could kill your opponent's Zillow technique if they're playing Empire that's really big um, he's gonna have to play more towards removing figures now to win on the attrition front but uh, I think that's gonna pay off for him all right so now both players are getting four VPs from the objectives um, Going to be some power tokens being distributed here. Mara and Garkon gaining damage power tokens. I think, can you, I don't think you can destroy the objectives in this mission. Yeah, that's the other one. So you can ignore the damage, uh, the damage markers on those crates is kind of meaningless. All right, Christian going to get initiative here. So this is big. If he can keep it, if he doesn't lose it to Derek. Um, oh, Dr. Afra is excavating planning, so that'll be big if she can get that extra card draw there. Oh, wow, he's gonna go for Jabba. And he gets a good roll there. He might reroll the blue, though, to get the pierce. Yeah. So we've got five, six, six pierce, three. Six damage to Jabba. He could do it, he could take him out. And he needs to do four. He needs one more damage. Oh no, he's got it, I think. He did, wow. Okay, Luke took out Jabba as well. So 
Christian using Luke as a heat-seeking missile to take out Derek's support. That's going to leave Derek without really much card draw or focus anymore. Uh, he's got no, he's actually has access to no more focus. Um, but Luke is very, very out there. I mean, now Mando's just going to come and carve him up, I think. Okay, so Luke moving back. Afra coming up. She's going to take a damage from Deflect here, but she's going to take the attack. Um, decent roll. So two damage to Luke. Deals one back with uh, Deflect. Okay, Gideon going to activate. He's going to move up. and Oh, he's going to focus uh, Zeb, it looks like. Okay, now we've got... Interesting. So, Migs Mayfeld playing planning. And now going to attack Luke with uh, Droid Arm and Element of Surprise. Oh, he doesn't need Droid Arm, so... Because he's, uh, he's right here. So I'm going to play Element on Luke. Oops, sorry about that. And interesting, Luke can deflect that um, one damage anywhere to anything in his line of sight. So it doesn't have to be back at Mayfield. There's Mayfield's card. So I think we're looking at uh, one, two, three, four damage to Luke. Oh, we're going to play Perry. Yeah, so four damage. And where's Luke? Luke's going to send the damage back at Onar with Deflect. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like Christian has drawn Son of Skywalker. Okay, 3PO going to focus R2. And now Zeb is going to move up to the yellow box. So Christian really going for the objectives here. And now we see Mando activating. And he's going to come up and uh, do some Beskar spear attacks here. So here's Mando's card. And it should say 12 points on it. But we did this after the uh, Vassal update. <coughs> so Beskar spear... Gonna have Pierce one, so we're gonna see five damage here. Luke's got 16 health, and he's gonna ping Onar again with the deflect. Oh, he shouldn't actually be able to ping Onar because that's a melee attack. And then the regular attack, which oh, a dodge. Does he have heightened? Ah, Derek had the heightened. So there goes Luke. Did take out Jabba and Bib, but unfortunately went down. Now that doesn't mean Son of Skywalker's out of play though. Because Mara is still in play, so she could still use it. Okay, Mara Jade going to come up and open the door and then move back into cover. Onar going to activate and just move off to the side. Alright, now we've got Garkon. Looks like he's going to charge in. Let's bring Jar Garkon's uh, card back up. He's got a damage token and focus. And it looks like he's going for Mando. Oof, not a good roll for Christian there. But he could make it work. Um, interestingly, he can use the Brutal Cleave to attack the child, even though he can't attack Mando with it. And that could actually be really useful. I think Derek should have probably incapacitated the child there. Oh, nice. We see Faint getting played. This is a card that I... I actually designed and I really like. Um, so he's going to drop one of those crappy attack dice and get rid of that triple block. So we go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, pierce 2. So he was doing 3 damage before faint. Oh, sorry, get out of the way, buddy. 3 damage before faint, and now without it, with it, he's going to be doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 damage. Nice. So 5 damage to Mando, ah, but unfortunately Onar is there to use get down, so he's going to get rid of that pierce too, so that's going to be 3 damage, and I think he's going to use protective fire, oh no, extra protection getting played by Onar here, uh, that's going to let him move 2 spaces and perform an attack, so we're going to attack Garkon. Um, 
Not great though. I think that's one damage to Garkon. Oh, zero damage. Okay, now we have Mando doing his protective fire since he's in the same space as the child when he got attacked by Garkon, so he gets to shoot back. Oh, big damage. So five damage to Garkon. Oh, no. Four. Five. There we go. Oh, nice. Garkon going to get to play his card um, Furious Charge. So this is similar to Son of Skywalker. This is his actual FFG card, and it gets played. It's quite good now that he doesn't suck. Uh, so he suffered three damage. He gets to ready his deployment card. So where is he going? I wonder, did he use Brutal Cleave? Limit once per activation. Uh, so Garkon going up to attack Afro but gets played on the lamb on him. And that's unfortunate because I believe that's his second activation. And it looks like that's the end of the round. Going into round three, that means Derek's going to have initiative here. Uh, we could see take from take initiative from Christian though. Element of Surprise is going to get excavated by Dr. Afra. Um, for those that don't know what that means, she has an ability that at the start of each round she can choose a command card in any discard pile that costs one or less, except take initiative, and you, that player can play it um, during that round as long as Dr. Afra is still in play. All right, take initiative, but negation from Derek. So Derek's going to get to keep the initiative here. Going to play second chance on Garkon, so if he dies, he'll go back to two health. Uh, and Mando going to activate. So the child is going to heal one damage. And now going to come up and spear on Garkon. Ah, going to use Field Tactician with the child first. So the child uh, played Field Tactician to give Mando an extra move action. And now Mando is going to Beskar spear on Mara Jade using the excavated element of surprise. And I think we hit the uh, break in the log, so let's open up part two here. There we go. We'll throw up uh, Mando's card. Okay, luckily we didn't lose out on any of the turns. So I'm going to attack Morrow Jade with the spear. Oh, that should be an uh, element of surprise, though. Oh, no, I guess she had line of sight to him. Is that what they're saying? That must be it. Okay, so in that case, she's going to take five damage from the first attack. Oh, nice. Playing Mara Jade's card, reactive loyalties. So she's actually going to recover three of that damage since this is a rebel list. Another cool design that I like from Season 5. Um, it's actually quite a powerful card. People don't play it very much, though. Because um, she would be dead, I think, here if she hadn't played that. So 5, 6, 7, 6 damage. Assassinate for 9, which unfortunately is going to kill Mara Jade. Ah, so she's not going to be able to play Son of Skywalker for Luke after all. And then Mando able to move back to the blue stashes. Okay, Garkon activating for Christian. Looks like he's going to go after Afra again. And that's going to do... Let's see. Five, that should kill her. Four, surge for plus one is five. Hmm, I don't know why she only took four there. Okay, yeah, if we're gonna activate, gonna remove the bleed and then move into the deployment zone. All right, Gideon gonna focus and push R2 up to the terminal. Oh no, that was R2, excuse me, drawing a card. 3B are going to focus Gideon and stay on the terminal. And now we've got Mayfield activating for Derek. Okay. 
I'm gonna attack Garkon here with urgency. I'm gonna go after Zeb. And Zeb's gonna play Iron Will, so I'll only take three damage from this attack. Yep, so five damage down to three, so he stopped two damage with that. And now Zeb going to go and finish the job on Afra. No. Gideon gonna activate first. Owner gonna come up. Going to rush on Garkon and then to the limit. So he gets a free action from playing rush. And of course he won't become stunned because he has immune. And Garkon gonna take four damage from that one. He does have 13 health, I believe. Yep. All right, now Zeb gonna come up, and this was, I think that was a good idea to wait. He's gonna get to double attack Onar. Onar using get down to add a block. Not gonna be able to trigger Zeb's new ability with there because he rolled too well. But uh, decent chunk of damage thanks to that surge power token. Uh, that's going to be 8 minus 1, so 7 damage into Onar with that first attack. And now I'm going to go for the melee here. With the Surge token. Uh, Onar going to play Parry to add an Evade, so that's going to be 5 damage into Onar. And that keeps him alive. So it's funny with Zeb now, you kind of want to roll badly so you can get a really good roll. <laughs> Uh, but that didn't quite work out there. Did do a lot of damage to Owner there, though. Okay, second chance goes off. At the end of the round, Garkon going to heal two damage. Um, we're going to see some power tokens on Gideon from the red stash. And Christian going to get initiative here. Field Tactician going to get excavated by Dr. Afra, who is still alive with one health. And let's see, Christian going to, looks like activate Gideon here. Going to try and kill off Onar with an attack and a damage power token and a focus. Nice, Gideon takes out Onar. Christian gets six VPs and actually pulls ahead on that. Um, so he must be getting the, yeah, he's ahead on objectives. But he's almost tied on kills thanks to killing Jabba and Bib. Okay, Mayfield gonna activate. He's got, you know, you can see there he's got three power tokens on him. That's part of his ability. Okay, get behind me being played though. So it looks like Zeb's gonna take the attack for Garkon. And Mig's gonna play tools for the job here. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. So six damage into Zeb. And that's one of the strong things that Guardians can do in ICP is force you to force the opponent to split damage by protecting each other. Now you have Garkon activating, gonna use charge and element of surprise to make sure that Afro does not dodge. Oh, we're gonna play celebration too. So we're gonna get eight VPs off of that kill. Going to 33. He's got a lot of damage on his figures, but they're not dying quite as fast as Derek's are. Uh, R2 going to draw another card, and looks like he's going to go in a double move onto the yellow stash. Oh, I see. They're using the they're using the damage markers as markers for the power tokens, because each turn they build up power tokens if nobody's there to claim them. So that's why they're using the damage markers there. Now we've got Mando, gonna do a regular attack, no Beskar Spear. This is on Garkon, who's got five health left. He does have a reroll. That's probably one of the worst Mando attacks I've seen, and that's saying something about how crazy his damage is. Um, so he's doing three damage to Garkon there. And the child gonna heal one damage off of Mando, and then gonna move to control the blue stash. And that's going to be the end of the round. So Derek is controlling one stash. Christian's actually controlling two terminals um, and controlling one stash as well. So Christian's still ahead here. 
Uh, but yeah, as soon as uh, Garkon goes down, it's going to tie up the score. So best card spear kills Garkon. Derek gets uh, eight points. Seven points. Still behind Christian, though. And then the child going to heal the damage and control the other one. So Mando controlling two objectives there, thanks to the child. Gideon going to activate, but not shooting at Mayfield due to return fire. Going to focus Zeb. Oh, get, uh, Mayfield using Marksman. Going to try and take out Zeb here. Going to spend the power token. Needs to do six damage. Oh, he's not going to use Marksman. He's going to attack Gideon. He must have um, Celebration in hand. Maybe he drew it somehow. Uh, spending the damage token. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's doing five damage to Gideon. That kills him. So it goes to 36. 3PO going to activate, going to control the red stash. Now R2 going to make a focused attack on Mayfeld. Mayfeld does have return fire, though. Uh, pretty good roll for R2. He's got pierce, too. That's two damage. And, oh, stun. That's right, I forgot. R2 can stun. So that's going to cancel out the return fire. So that was good. And that means that Zeb can attack Mayfeld with impunity here. So nice play by Christian. I'm gonna double tap on Mayfeld, and I don't think he can actually survive a double tap from Zeb. Oh, unless he dodges. <laughs> okay, and the melee attack. Zeb not getting to trigger it. He hasn't rolled singles yet. Um, but that's five damage still. And that's the end of the round, and Derek goes to 40 from the objectives. Alright, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed that gameplay. We'll see you for the next one.